And welcome everybody. I'm so glad to see you today on TNM Coaching Unplugged and on Soren Todorovic Interconnected Podcast. And today we have a special guest. I was trying to get him to record with me for months and months and months, but he's super busy. And finally, we managed to anchor him down in this conversation. Today. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And it's it going true. to be a special one. It's going to be a special one because when something is making you make it for a long time, it gets to be really beautiful and juicy, right? Mm -hmm. It percolates. And percolates. Today's guest is Chris Connors. He is a founder of Oppa Meditation App that you will be having a chance to explore in details as we go through this recording. He's also teacher, mentor, guide, coach, meditation specialist. He is one of these multidimensional beings of love and light who has so many creative expressions. So it was always difficult for me to think about how am I going to introduce Chris to you? But we decided to introduce him through meditation and stillness and silence, something that we really need uh, in today's world. And today's topic is going to be us talking about meditation, talking about stillness and understanding why is this so important in this world that we're living in right now. So welcome, Chris. Thank you so much, Soren. I am so happy to be here and to eventually make it. Uh, I know our, <laughs> our stars have aligned. Our stars are aligned. Yes, God, God, and universe, <laughs> everything requires to produce this podcast. Oh, I love that bit more about your journey into meditation because some people who listen to this podcast they're already experienced meditators and some people are still getting their head around what is meditation sure. how to get into it and i think it's very important for you to mention that because you come from multiplicities of different worlds so to say mm -hmm. so what was yeah. your end point into meditation well my my first entry into meditation was actually through uh difficult situations. It wasn't a, a sort of a discovery of something that I would like to do. Um, so when I, in 1999, after the loss of my mother, um, I was moved into an incredible world of self-discovery because I was really grieving. And through that process, uh, I started to train as a psychotherapist. And at that time, my psychotherapy teacher was also very connected to this, the, the meditation world. Um, and so that took me on a real journey into uh, discovering and learning uh, this practice. So I discovered very quickly, uh, more intuitively, of course, because we didn't have science, neuroscience working then, it was really much more about I just felt better the more I was meditating. Uh, and I couldn't necessarily explain exactly why. But that, at that time, it really took me into um, a real kind of curiosity about how this practice was really working for me. And then I spent the next 10, 15 years really researching and understanding why that was the case. So it's been a while. It's been, it's been a, while. a part of my life. It's an essential part of my life, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. I often sort of say to people, you know, meditation can be uh, a great uh, tool for everyday life, much like you use an app. Um, you know, you can dip in and it sort of makes you relaxed or calm. But it's also a life practice and it comes from, you know, a source of deep mystery and, you know, thousands and thousands of years of practice and uh, philosophy. Uh, and so I'm very tuned into that. That's sort of been a very big forebear of my uh, work. Uh, but I like to bring meditation out into the world. It's easy to digest. And I think that's the key, that easiness. You know, that doesn't need yes. to be serious practice that you really have to work hard to get your head around. And then you struggle and struggle. Eventually, right. you are able to, to right. meditate. Yeah. And nowadays, yeah. what you're offering and what we all need to offer is the ease into the yeah. meditation. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my my thing is that, you know, our mind is a very complex space and meditation is actually a very, very simple practice. And so it's about how do you actually let complexity align with simplicity? And when you do that, that's when you discover the sort of the true fruits of meditation. But that kind of alignment can sometimes be a bumpy process. There's a little turbulence on the way. The mind, you know, our mind just loves attention it just wants to put attention on many many things a meditation is about bringing attention to very very simple things and so that's the training and i always say meditation is a training yeah yeah it's like practice that you entrain your mind to still yes to, down, to you know focus to be present in the moment right it's it's more yes. about 
mind. Yes, it is. I mean, I would always just, I mean, I would say that and describe meditation as a, it's a training to discover the true perspective of life through the lens of the present moment. And that is a, a kind of my way of seeing it. It's how do we enter into present state, which is in essence our truth. Um, how do we stay there and expand into there? And once we're in there, the fruits and benefits and the joy of life actually comes from there and that place. But that's kind of also, you know, it takes time. It takes some energy and effort to know how to enter through those gates sometimes. Yes. Yeah, so how to enter into that present moment? It's one yes. of the most important uh, elements of meditation, right? Yeah. Yeah. Entering, dropping, you know, there's a lot of sort of... Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, talk around meditation, you know, uh, that, that we must sort of not have any thoughts and, you know, clear our mind. And, you know, that that's not really how it works. You know, truth is that it's really deeply about uh, an, uh, an observation and acceptance of whatever is. And that's what, you know, we were talking earlier uh, about stillness and stillness and the noise. You know, that to me is the premise of this work. It's about how can you live in unity? with everything that's going on, regardless if it's a sort of positive or negative thing, that brings the relaxation. It's not sort of getting rid of everything in order for you to have a sort of a clear space. It's about full acceptance of an ongoing reality that's forming in front of you. And for me, what you're sharing right now is so refreshing because when you are fully able to witness yourself, to witness your thoughts and feelings, whatever comes within the meditation space without trying to get rid of it, because for me, when I was taught to meditate, it was all about stop your mind, stop right. thinking, do not have any thoughts. <clears throat> if you have thoughts, try to manage them, let them go, you know, delete them, right. brush them off, and then try so miserably to be in this very present moment <laughs> right now. And I really struggled. I was like, oh my God, how am I going to get myself start to stop thinking? Yeah, exactly. And that already is just producing more thinking, right? Think about it. If you're thinking about your thinking, then you've got a lot of thinking going on. So really the point for me is that the more that you relax your attention and that you create a, a relationship with your thoughts, at that point, you're able to actually allow them to be and to gently drop in to a, a calmer situation. And in fact, those thoughts begin to disappear. That's really what happens. You can't, you can't make right? them disappear. So I always, yeah, exactly. So in my meditations, I always, you, me, me, all meditators will, will talk about thoughts and breath because thoughts are impulses that come naturally into our system, you know, and breath is our natural physical energy in our body. These are the two things that we cannot switch off automatically. They must find their way to dissolve. And when they dissolve, our whole system then becomes in, in a united state and it becomes into full, full alignment of the present moment. And from there, we start to experience a completely different sense of self. So I'm just going to ask you, you know, what I know a lot of people will ask when they listen to this podcast and they would say, but yeah. how, but how do I how? get that state of when everything dissolves and I'm not really struggling with my mind, I'm not trying to mm. let go of my feelings, mm. you know, because a lot of the people that I coach and, and talk to, you know, they really, really want to meditate. Sure, and try sure. And feel and I know. Try and and there's this question, but how do I get there? I mean, yeah, I know this is a tr big question, but. What would you say well, to it's, that? It's, it's, it's actually not. It's really is a training. It's practice. It's practice and practice and practice. And mm. within practice, what the most important question that you need to ask yourself is why not, not judge. Of course, it's very difficult to not judge yourself when you're in it because you can see yourself judge yourself. So, <laughs> But it's actually really, really important to ask this question. Where am I putting my attention? Where am I putting my attention? And whenever you start going with that, then that's where you notice most of the time we put attention into our thoughts with beliefs and all these different things as it's moving on. But actually meditation is always asking you, that's why it's come back to your breath. It's about diverting your attention into your form of breathing. One, so that you breathe better. And of course, that's just good, more oxygen to the brain. But what it's actually also doing in, on, on a neural sense, it's actually relieving the stress area, the front, the prefrontal area of the brain. It's allowing a more neuroplastic experience of the brain. So the brain starts physically changing and moving at the same time. Our thoughts then start to become much more dynamic. And actually from that sense, our brain begins to like what we're thinking in a way. 
And what we need to do from there is always use breath to go back to. So where do you put your attention? And that's why we'll always say, remember to breathe and breathe in and breathe out. It's so simple, but actually that's where our attention wants to go because it will activate new experiencing, even new thought patterns, new feelings, new hormonal situations. And that's the power of the work. So when you go into, I can't meditate or it's difficult, you've already created a thought system that you're going to attach to every time you go and meditate. And that will probably come in, but it will go away and it will go away with time, patience, and also commitment to the practice. Much like you go to the gym because you want a certain kind of body over 10 months. Well, that's the exact same with meditation. There is no quick fix to it. Um, and that uh, that means is that that's an interesting one. There's no quick fix when we're looking into the world that everything is instantaneous. Maybe we want to be able to meditate instantaneously with the profound. Right. Effects, of right? course. So of then, course. And, you know, I, I, I did my training in Japan, you know, in six hours against a wall. You know, it, uh, no one has six hours to do that. You know, I, I traveled all the way across the world to learn to meditate. Now you right. press a button and now you're sort of you go into a sort of the system. And um, one is not better than the other necessarily, actually. I just think that what happened for me was that I had extremely strong holding in my process. Whereas if you have an app and you're working with the app, of course, there's going to be limits on your time, your energy, your attention. Or you might swipe the app and go into, you know, some other dating yeah. app or WhatsApp or something. So it's that, again, is a sort of um, reflection of where we put our attention. And actually, that to me is one of the most critical things it's not how we meditate is where does our attention want to go so yeah and the that's, listening of that's really key yeah go ahead sorry to interrupt you listening no to i'm you. just saying the listening of that within that question is so potent and powerful because when you ask yourself right now where does my attention want to go it's just so powerful and you will notice and you will see and that that's just the, that that's the power of this kind of observational work yeah so where do we put our attention to? That's a beautiful question to explore within the meditation space, but also how do we breathe effectively to be able to maintain and sustain your practice? So now, what is the breathing technique that you use? Is it something simple, easy, or did you need to learn a very complicated yogic breathing to be able to sustain your breath? You know, I think that's another interesting question that everybody will... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I learned through a whole series of modalities of breath work and um, deep sort of philosophical teachings and then how you apply them into your meditation experience. So you have a very physical uh, world of, of, of breath work and then you have different techniques that you use because the thing is when you discipline your mind, it's able to structure new forms and new learnings. So the thing is that maybe in life, if you get to the first section of just finding a way to to let the mind be much more rigorous and disciplined, um, that might be enough in life, right? But I was training to go much further in those systems to then go into uh, deeper knowledge-based systems. So they were working through uh, different realizations, um, different techniques, visualizations, um, mm -hmm. and really working sort of with very expansive elements. But I had to do a lot, a lot of groundwork to even go there. And I can tell you now in my busy life as an entrepreneur, I still would have to get through those ceilings again to go back into that space. It's not an immediate access, you know? Yeah, We're topped yeah. up with thoughts and stress and all sorts of things. So it takes time. That whole process took, took years. Yeah. But I guess when people begin or start or practice, yeah. the most important thing is to find their own breath for pra practice so that they it's, can... It is the it. most powerful thing in life is become uh, connected deeply with your breath. It is... On, for so many, many reasons. One, it's of course, it literally is your life source. On a fundamental level, on a basic level, with no breath, we are nobody. And it is literally that meeting place between life and death, you know? So it is to be, it's precious. And so, you know, most of our day, when we're in our thought processes, we're probably breathing at about 45 to 50% capacity all day. And so even just the remembering to breathe in our body, our whole body is pulling oxygen into the blood it's energizing our system. That's just physical. And I would say on the most simple level, 10 breaths that are just fully conscious in a day are a good start as any, not necessarily even learning to meditate or anything, just getting into your breath and really going as far as you can to acknowledge that it's, it needs to go deeper. And what's your day change? When I breathe deeper and I'm really fully in my breath all the time, my day's different. It just is. 
mind to yeah. you absolutely right mind to you completely yeah. transforms everything even if you're struggling or you're under pressure or you feel tension in your body you feel the stress is building up when you consciously start breathing you know you slowly step That's back right. in the well when you breathe in your heart rate rises and when you breathe out your heart rate falls right if you're breathing in and out an equal distance you start to regulate your heart rate at exactly the rate it needs to be and then from there of course you're working through all the biomechanics of the body the brain is responding everything is uh, working really well and uh, that is that's the ultimate really is to just get into that mastery of breath uh, to regulate your system your whole system we also talked about how do we move meditation into really helping us navigate through this digital world that we're living in right now mm. and i know mm. that you really uh big with your thought leadership and your uh, ability to understand how stillness is really necessary right now and i know the stillness mm -hmm. is also part of meditation so mm -hmm. talk to a little bit about stillness and why do you believe stillness is so important and how stillness supports our life and how can we use stillness and silence mm -hmm. mainly to be able to mm -hmm. uh, exist in a much more present way yeah okay well, I mean, I, I, I did a talk not so long ago with um, the young generation at Google, and uh, there's a lot of talk about digital detoxing and sort of coming off digital. And my view is always that, that to invite people to do that is actually potentially adding more stress into their situation rather than taking mm -hmm. it away. It sounds like a lovely thing to do to sort of balance things up, and I do recommend it, of course, but in the essence of like long-term relationship with technology, we have to really learn to find a way to master and embrace. And so the way I look at that is what I call moving through the three realities. Uh, and the three realities for me are our natural reality, so the physical matter and nature as it is, our inner reality, which is you know where we go into the inner mechanics and inner technology, and then the actual uh, virtual reality, which is, of course, the world and digital reality, the world that we're living in. And it is a paradigm. We do live in it. And you know, you ask anyone in the young generation, they live in that reality. They don't have an on-off button. So what I talk about when it comes to um, how do we train ourselves to flip in and out of these realities in a way that it becomes more of a, a journey in and out and knowing when you're in it and when you're not. And that sort of mastery of movement between these will help create a real sense of perspective, but also a healthy relationship between one and the other, because they're all designed to balance each other. It's just that, you know, digital has got so completely out of hand for us because it's basically our mind. It's running our life. It's become our to-do list, it's become everything that we think. And so and when you go back into soul and you connect to planet in those different realities and you're flipping and you're really connected intentionally with them, it just really helps balance out this, this interrelationship. So where I kind of look at stillness and the sort of the meditator in all of that is that to me, to find and really achieve stillness uh, in life is to be in the rhythm of all rhythms. That means it's like the, the being completely connected to the way everything is just as it is without needing to change any of it. And within that lies an inherent deep acceptance and deep actually a deep love for everything, of course, whatever it is. And there is no fight. There is no resistance. Uh, and that is a place where that's what I call it, accessing deep stillness. It doesn't mean that it's, we don't have a busy mind and it doesn't mean that we're calm even. It's that we're in that place of, of an acceptance uh, of, of all it is. And from there, you can make choices. That's the, that's the beautiful thing about it, is when you get to a real still point in life, and meditation is one of the fastest accesses to that. Uh, when you get to a still point, you can make different kinds of choices. So I have this mantra that I call, be still, see clear, go create. And I feel like that sort of, when you find stillness and you drop into stillness in the way that you can, you find new clarity, new perspectives, new insights that you can then make choices about and, and really activate in your life. And that will take you on the track, but it comes from that inner awareness and that complete sort of acceptance of things that are, rather than things that are born from not being enough, not being good enough, trying to win, you know, all of those different kind of motivations that we have in our psyche, which often drive us. 
if we're able to just accept that they are there and actually head into that zero space, something. Yeah, and also in the digital universe right now, to come to that zero space of stillness is super important because if you don't regroup yeah. within that space of stillness, we're not able to create contemplation and awareness and we're not able then to action and execute. Right. No, we're... we're yeah, so when you when I look at it, I look at it as being more in the mind. You know, the, the digital space is an absolute kind of mind field, literally. Not just a mind field, but a mind field. Mm -hmm. And um, it's literally, if you want to enter into the space of the mind, it's the best place to go right now, right? It's fun. Um, but if you, you can see that it's completely and utterly dominating these different realities, then it's time to step back. It's time to go into the inner world for time and start balancing that out. Um, or spend time in the world and be in the world and look at that sort of shift every time. It's a balancing act rather than a, a binary act of on and, off. And also it's balancing with the power of your heart. And again, what I know about your work is that you are really inviting people to step into that sacred space of connecting yes. to their heart and really using yeah. the heart intelligence to kind of balance the mind. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. For me, it's uh, the heart is the master. You know, um, I think the mind is a beautiful tool, but it can often be extremely foolish. And, uh, you know, often it's not something that you would want to always trust. Um, but the heart is always, always in mastery. And I think right when that space is at work, you know, you're at your most powerful, you're your most present, you're at your, you know, you're literally radiating your energetic field. Uh, your electromagnetic field is three meters, I think, around you from the heart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So when it's in its full capacity, uh, you know, we're constantly in that zone. So um, to me, it is, it's every reason it's the ultimate place to go. Yeah. Matter of art. And for the people who are too busy in their life, too busy in their mind, too digital, too distracted by the social media, by digital, yeah. you know, stimulants, so to say, mm -hmm. how do we get into that space of heart when you really departure from your mind and you can settle mm -hmm. more into this space of, Feeling yourself mm. even more. What's yeah, your I mean, practice well, tool? I mean, there's some really, really simple ones. So, you know, and, and there's a lot of stuff online that you can find or, or through books. Mm. Um, you know, the power of gratitude, for example, using sort of visual tools like that in your meditation, closing your eyes, simple question, who am I grateful for right now? What am I grateful for right now? That's freeing up the prefrontal areas again. It's diverting attention to the things that activate love in your heart. That is such a, a simple and amazing tool, you know, to be able to do that. Power of the sun, you know, connect with the sun, you know, the life force that it gives you, feeling grateful for that. It's just a beautiful way of completely and utterly open heart. Super simple things, huh? We just forget to do them. We forget to be grateful, wake up to your life. That's all the heart at work. The rest of it really is the stuff that needs to just follow. And we're so lucky that within your Oppo app, you can remind people. Yeah, to... we do. Yes. Yeah, how, we do. How do we you do. use your Oppo to kind of get us to remember, to connect to our heart, to remember to be grateful, to remember to connect to the sun, to remember yeah. to practice what we need to practice on a daily basis? How is Oppo facilitating all of that? Well, so Oppo, the, 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 the unique thing with Oppo is that it is... Uh, location based, which means that it's helping you get a sense of place and presence through each session that you do on the app. Uh, it connects you either uh, with a place that you're at. Um, so we create portals all over cities and around nature, and we uh, can guide you to go there and sit and we give you an open eye view of the world. And you follow our guidance and guide you with the sea and the sky and the mountains in front of you. It's a very simple way of connecting with the natural reality. Uh, then it's using we're using sound and we're delivering sound and guidance through the digital sphere so you're actively digital connected and then it's asking for inner work so there's inner practice work through breath work or through realization techniques or gratitude techniques and all that are in there so you get that combined very very rich experience in a short period of time 12 15 minutes and um, which really can guide you deeply into the present state and that's where the heart kind of starts to really wake up so yeah. you, we do them in locations, and then we also do work at homes. So we have a section called journeying in, and that's yeah. really deep sound baths and lots of different kinds of meditations for different types of, times of the year. 
helping you connect still with uh, the world around you. Um, mm -hmm. And I always say, you know, Oppo opens your eyes to you. Uh, and that's really what it's done for activating the heart. It's a beautiful yeah, tool to, again, remind us because what I find yeah. out in my, in my busy day, because I'm like you, I'm running the business, have a lot of obligations, mm -hmm. family. We all intend and we would love to be in that space of deeper connection and meditation and stillness and, you know, create from that space, connect to our hearts. This is something that all of the people are now intending to do, but then the life takes over, right? The life yeah. takes over. Well, we forget. We forget to take care of our brain state, you know? We become super, so left brain in our day because work equates left brain work, right? And it becomes so dense in particular areas that we forget the deep need of our brain to keep becoming really dynamic. And, you know, we talk a lot about neuroplasticity and how do we forget that? It's kind of like at the end of the day, like, oh God, I haven't done anything for any other part of my brain. And it's just been sitting there growing like, going <laughs> like this. No wonder we're stressed, you know? Our brain can't take that. Mm. Yeah. And then the OPPO, what it does as a digital app, it really supports you to remember, to plug in, to connect. It, yes, it does. Okay done in places if you're in the office to get out of the office to be able to sit yes. in a dedicated a space when you can take a walk right take a walk to the local bench sit there and once you're there it will unlock a session that will guide you right with the view in front of you and that will connect you to nature it gives you a sense of space again like aesthetic gives you a sense of presence but also we input a lot of sound technology into the brain so it helps the brain become your plastic it allows the brain the brain so enjoys music and vibration and yeah. so this work we designed specifically, and our sounds are different for different needs. So sometimes it's help you focus, sometimes to help you fall asleep. Different mechanics of sound that work for the brain, and we we've, mm -hmm. we've really researched them all now. We work with lots of different types, so you can use them any time of day, any place. Exactly, and when the brain is fully activated, as you beautifully say, then it's much easier for us to drop into the heart, to drop into the connection, to drop yeah. into the body. Because yeah. again, you're gonna, you also supporting people to drop into and connect to their bodies so it's not only mind it's not only did, heart it's additional element of your multidimensional expression which is movement right so yes just yes so yeah sure i mean i got fascinated by movement as part of my journey actually my journey of grief so again um i you may hear from my accent that uh, i'm from belfast and grew up in a in a very tense uh, city city of conflict and I realized that in my body, I was storing a lot of uh, stress, trauma, tensions. Um, and through my meditation practice, I started to become aware of them, but I couldn't necessarily find ways to activate them because trauma actually lives in the body. And so it was through the movement processes and uh, discovering and working and spending time with the great, uh, great visionary, Gabrielle Roth, who is one of the most incredible women who I have ever come across. Um, I spent time with her a lot in New York working through how can you actually use your body to download the mind, download trauma and release it. And that mm -hmm. became a, a, an incredible insight into a new world of presence and meditation that I hadn't experienced before because seated meditation is a very particular way of being with the body. This was about becoming your mind, not just sort of watching it and then expressing and releasing all that is through you to enter into a deeper stillness. That for me then became much more sort of, it was almost like a more fast track way, actually. And um, the work that I teach through movement, through the particular work of algorithms and other work like that, it's very, it really works with the Western mind because we're so psychodramatic. You know, the yeah. Eastern mind is very considered and very kind of non egoic. We are dramatic and we're emotional. We're, you know, we're full of all of that stuff. And so this work is, this work really is good for the Western mind. I wish everyone could access that kind of work themselves. Yes. But I, I guess it's also important to mention that I mentioned that we need to take our body as well with us and this journey of, of transformation because if you meditate stillness, yeah, get yeah, our absolutely wonderful, yeah. but the body is not there. If the body right. is not no, the body is different rhythms, it's you know, we, yeah. Well, the, the body, the body is more enlightened than the mind, you know, yeah. and you know. Because the body cannot lie. The body is just truth. And, you know, when you think about that, you know, the fact that we can do something to change it or move it or use it, it's a true alchemist for our, our, for our spiritual journey. Uh, and so, you know, I would never advocate that people would only just sit and meditate. That actually can be quite torturous. Um, 
but in the app as well, we're building quite a lot of movement sections and bringing in more movement modalities because it's especially now in these times, uh, this is the perfect kind of medicine for this time. Uh, ways of accessing you, and it's all yours. You have all of it. It's your resource. That's the amazing thing. You don't need anything external. And that's the real beauty of this kind of work. I would love to leave for the inspired that you don't need anything external. It's all inside of you, right? It's all up to all you. All of it. Your every single thing that you do is through the natural ecosystem. You know, whatever you put into your body through nature becomes nature and moves out as nature. Whatever comes through your body through the to your mind and good thoughts, it becomes a healthy body. And the body will tell you if it's not, it's not. Um, so it is one. Well, it is the great resource. It is our greatest uh, place we can go. Um, so, do you have any exercise or any final thought? Anything that you would love to leave audience with? Something that we might all practice after listening to this podcast? Anything that comes to you spontaneously? You know what? I would just love to leave you with that question. You know that you could ask yourself every time: Where am I putting my attention? This one is really profound. Uh, it's a practice. It's an inquiry. So what I would say is, if you want a little bit of practice in there, I would say take five deep breaths first, so focusing deeply on your breathing and just releasing. So you're activating some sense of presence and then allow that question to come in and just notice where your attention wants to go and, uh, and play with that. It's playful. It's actually fun because then you yeah. can start to really bring down where, where the mind is back in the yeah. breath. So yeah. five breaths, question, and then just close with breath. Always breath. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. I'm sure we're going to get to more of this in-depth conversation with you as we go along to, to this uh, podcast. Anytime. Thank you so much for coming today. I told you this is the elevation uh, conversation, something that really helps you to elevate your mind, to elevate your heart and your soul and your body to the next level of itself. It's a space of inspiration. So I really hope that you got inspired today with our amazing guest, guest Chris Connors. We're going to drop all the information about Chris down in the description of this podcast. But for time being, if you want to know more about OPPO app, go to www.oppo.world to find out more. How can you use this amazing app in your everyday life? Thank you, Chris, for joining us. My absolute pleasure. Have a beautiful day. Bye. <laughs>